Hey there! So, uh, we're finished with the geodesic dome. That was quite an accomplishment. Um, now, we're working on the crow's nest. And the crow's nest is a pretty important structure. Um, it needs to be able to support the weight of the people inside it, uh, but most importantly, the uh, tensile forces from the zip line that we're stringing. And uh, the crow's nest is based on a pentagonal pyramid. Uh, so it's sort of five poles coming uh, from a pentagon towards a point. And we're bracing it at two points to uh, hopefully um, increase the column strength of those struts. Um, so to do that, we need to uh, make these rings of braces. Um, and they're going to have a basic 36 degree bend in them, um, each strut on each side, to sort of go the 72, 72, etc. degrees of pentagon. But in addition to that, um, we need to bring those ends up about 13.5 degrees uh, to account for the fact that this pyramid structure is tapered. Uh, so that when these all bolt together, uh, you've got these nice flat faces uh, that the tubes can bolt to. So let's go ahead and uh, take a straight tube and turn it into this. So first thing we do is we just load it in there, let it go flat. This bend is the easiest bend. We don't have to go too tight there. And now we're just going to do a 36 degree bend. Um, we've got a previous video that shows how we do that. We use basically the same techniques for that. 36 degrees is a little bit more. It looks pretty cool. All right. And thanks to the annealing, we're not getting major cracking. So there we go. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, the next step is uh, make some noise. What we're going to do here is we've got these marks on the tube end. Um, this area is going to be perfectly flat, and this area uh, is going to twist to account for this new angle. So I load this thing in there, um, but only up to the level of the twist, which is about three quarters of an inch. Uh, all right. And this one does have to be pretty tight. Uh, the reason for that is that. I'm now going to put a vertical force in, and it's going to want to twist out of the vise, and it's not really um, keyed in to resist twisting. There's just pure friction doing that for me. All right. So now I give myself this big protractor, and it's very important that uh, the uh, two bends talk to each other. And what I learned is that uh, the first time I do this, I bend it down taking care not to slip and gouge your eyes. And uh, I can get a little, little bit more angle and then bring it back into the original plane. All right. And what we're shooting for is roughly parallel with this line. Um, we don't have to be perfect here because this crow's nest structure doesn't have as many struts coming into each joint as a geodesic dome. So it can account for a little bit more slop. But we do want to shoot for nominal. So, let's pop this guy out and see what we've got. That looks pretty <laughs> interesting, but that's, uh, that's what we're shooting for right now. So the next step is I'll reload my visual cue here. And uh, there we go. That lines up to a, uh, a line that I've drawn on the, the base of the mill here with the, with the CNC functionality. Uh, bring this guy in. Go all the way, nice and snug, um, and uh, always try to keep it in a horizontal plane before we do that bend. And this guy helps us with that. So here we go, let's go to 36 degrees. Alright, right on the mark. Next step, we're going to go up 13 and a half degrees. So in this case, I just put this guy relatively near, and oops, <laughs> what did I forget? I need to back this guy out before I do that. And uh, the reason I say oops is I can feel it immediately. If I don't provide it that ribbon, that three quarters inch long ribbon, it's extremely strong in that plane. So I could tell right away that I had forgotten something. So we go nice and tight here. Now that ribbon of metal 
um, is going to be subject to a twisting force, and a ribbon is not very good at twisting. Tube, on the other end, is very good at resisting that. All right, cool. And uh, before I continue, let's make sure that we are going to line up with our original tool there. So it's a subtle thing here, but I think what I'm learning is that there's never an excuse to uh, not use your tools. We're trying to always target this, uh, this, this nominal shape. Um, and if we always target that nominal, if we always use our tools, um, I think we hover around the nominal, which is good. Because uh, if we have nominal parts, they're going to assemble much easier. All right, so here we go. Uh, we've got our thing, we've got our space, and up we go. Much easier. You can tell that's, that's, not, uh, that's not difficult at all. All right. And now I'll just eyeball parallel between the edge of the tube and the line. And that's, that's good enough. Um, this gives me one final opportunity to make sure I'm in plane with my 36. And I can cue it in and think like, yeah, that looks about parallel with my up 13.5. So this guy should be done. And uh, now I can go ahead and grab one of my other ones. And um, let's see if they talk to each other. That guy's going up. This guy's going up. That's really cool. So we'll have to get some pictures of what the, all five of them look like put together. So thank you for your time.